okay after saying this how to apply our um, uh, chi square test let's now start looking into another test called Morgan's Smirnov test so notice that when we use the chi square test we basically compared fi with ai over k points right i equals to 1 to k but we actually had n points so then why to compare only this k points why not compare all these n points so that is what we will do here in the uh, kolmogorov smirnov test so we are going to compare all the n points and uh, but these points will be compared at the empirical relative frequencies okay so what basically we are going to do is we are going to compute the empirical we are going to compute the deviation between the observed empirical p cdf and that cdf under the null hypothesis so we know that under null hypothesis my cdf is already given to me and now i am going to compare it against my empirical cdf and when we want to apply this uh, kolmogorov smirnov test we are going to assume that my null hypothesis corresponds to a continuous distribution okay now let's try to understand what how to compute this empirical uh, distribution suppose we have a random sample then its empirical cdf at point s is basically the fraction of the points that takes value less than or equals to xi so formally this is basically a number of points which are taking value less than x divided by n and in this case in the i'm going to simply it as now ks test the test statistics in ks test is the maximum deviation between my empirical and my expected cdfs okay so and uh, x can be uh, interval so we are going to take a uh, x can be in fact uh, here is the entire real line so we are going to take the supremum over all these differences now the question here is does this dn statistics if i want to find its statistics do i need to know the underlying distributions of the sample to compute the dn s yes, indeed i need to know what is f not but does distribution of the s dn itself depend on the underlying distribution so whatever it is let's assume for hypothetically whatever whether it depends or not we will come to a point but let's say whatever the dn we have it is a stochastic quantity and we can for a given alpha let's denote dn alpha to be the 1 minus alpha th quartile of the distribution now if you want to use this statistics to check my hypothesis whether it has a cdf if not which matched at all the points or it is going to be different at at least one point i can check this hypothesis by comparing my dn against this dn alpha so if i'm if i'm going to accept this null hypothesis when dn is going to be small and as again if this uh, and i'm going to reject it if this dn is going to be larger than this dn alpha so this makes sense because if my empirical estimation if my underlying samples are indeed following my null hypothesis distribution then sn is expected to be close to if not at most of the points and if they it is going to follow something else it is going to be differing at at least few points or at least one point and then this dn is going to be large 
So based on that intuition, we can set up this dn. But then by setting my d, uh, my threshold here, which is dn alpha in this fashion, which is dn alpha is the 1 minus alpha quartile, I am going to get that the probability of reject to be alpha, that is I am going to get an alpha level test. But does this how to compute the dn distribution? What is the distribution of dn? What is the distribution of dn? How is this uh, dn distributed? Okay, we will come to that. So before that, this test we had, you notice if you notice, we took the absolute difference and when we wanted to check, we wanted this to be exactly equal at all the points. This is called a two-sided test of the KS test and when we do not take the absolute value but we take the difference between Sn and F0 then we are going to define the statistics at dn plus and when we take the difference between F0 and Sn and take the max all, all value of x then we are going to def, denote it at dn minus. And now if you are going to define alpha level tests by taking dn alpha plus and dn alpha minus to be 1 minus alpha quartile of the distributions dn alpha and dn alpha minus respectively, then we can think of one sided test. So if you want to test that fx matches with f0 only is, is going to be larger than f0 at all the point or it is going to be uh, maybe this should be less than less than at least for some time for some and uh, we are going to accept or reject this hypothesis maybe when dn alpha dn plus is less than uh, d plus n alpha we are going to accept and uh, when we are if not the case we are going to reject it so this we can do in this case and uh, when we want to test the opposite of this like uh, whether my f of x is going to be for all x and uh, or it is going to be uh, less than f of x for some s we can use dn minus now and then I am going to accept at 0 if dn minus is less than or equals to dn alpha minus and uh, similarly otherwise and uh, reject otherwise okay and uh, these tests are called one sided tests so and we have two criteria here depending on whether we want to see that my actual hypothesis is going to be always larger than manal hypothesis uh, at all the points or it is going to be less Okay, to understand now the distribution of dn, we need to a little bit revisit the properties of empirical distribution and also our order statistics. Let us say I have a random sample drawn from some underlying distribution. Uh, now recall that we have denoted the order statistics as x of 1 under this parenthesis like this and x of 2 and 2 under this parenthesis like this where x1 denoted the smallest value and uh, this quantity denoted the second smallest value like that. Now instead of only looking at the first order and nth order statistics we can also look into the zeroth order statistics but is just simply defined to be 0 and also we can define n plus 1th order statistics and uh, which will be simply take it as infinity. Now with this we can write our empirical distribution as this. It is going to be 0 when x is going to be okay maybe let me write this. I have x of 1 here or oh, no.
x of 1 here x of uh, 2 here maybe x of 3 here like that and I have x of n and like this so all this region is what uh, this is this this entire region here is captured by this and this region here is captured by this and I think I made a mistake here this should be 2 and 3 and this region is captured by this and uh, 3 and uh, maybe this infinity is not there and this and this should have been n plus 1 here right and this region is captured by this now it so happens that if I have a sequence of random variables y n where y n is going to be distributed as s n and I have a random variable s x which is distributed as per my null hypothesis then one can argue that y n converges to x almost surely okay further if I take so notice that this Sn is a random quantity for any for any x okay because this itself is defined in terms of this random samples right now it so happens that the expected value of Sn at point x is simply f of x or maybe I should have written this f of 0 computed at s so what we basically saying is and also we can show that basically we can show that this is going to be uh, f of x x for all x okay so then what we are saying is basically sn is an unbiased and consistent estimator of the cdf of x so this sn is going to provide me a good information about my uh, null hypothesis when I have large number of samples so that is why I want to compare these two now to understand the distribution let's little bit uh, express this dn and use the properties of my order statistics so I know that dn can be written as dn plus and dn minus right now dn plus is this simply and I can split this summation over all into max over my i's between 0 to n and also between the ranges so maybe I think I made a yeah, mistake here this should have been x minus so basically I am this soup this soup over entire regions I am basically dividing into this region so I this entire region I have basically divided into n plus 1 regions and I am looking now at the max in each of these regions okay now I know that for a x which between x of i and x i plus 1 my sn is going to be constant and that is given by i by n and uh, so what I mean here is like uh, we just said that this is going to be the value of my sn is 0 here 1 by n in this range 2 by n in this range like that so we know that my sn is like a, maybe like somewhere like it jumps like this right maybe wherever it is like it jumps like this by equal number of amount and maybe like this so this is like 1 by n this is like 2 by n and this is like uh, yeah 3 by n wherever it is so now if I uh, I know that if I max over 
0 into n I know that this is if I take soup inside because this guy I know is simply i by n in that range and this is now going to be in for uh, x of i uh, less than or equals to x less than x of i plus 1 of x 0 x and I know that the my f 0 because of its uh, monotonicity properties and uh, I know that uh, and if I have to take uh, its uh, infimum value it is going to be the smallest here and that is why I am going to when I go from here this inf over this I can simply write a f of 0 x of i. Okay, now one can also compute dn minus similarly using dn minus and dn plus I can write this expression like this. But notice that even after writing this I have just uh, did uh, gave a little longer expression but both dn plus dn minus dn here all of them are depending on this f naught which is basically the distribution of my underlying uh, uh, like uh, of my hypothesis uh, uh, my null hypothesis. At this point it is not clear why is that this dn has distribution is independent of this underlying distributions for which we are testing the samples against. Okay. To do this further let us understand uh, or uh, let us understand little bit more of the properties and the transformations of the random variable. Suppose I have a random variable x which has a CDF of f of x and if I define a new random variable by applying transformation f of x on x then my new random variable y has any form distribution. So uh, you can check this, this is like an exercise. Now I can define a new random variable by applying this transformation f of x on the rth order statistics. Okay, instead of simply taking my random variable x, I am going to now replace this x by its rth order sample and I am going to define that new value as u r. Now this is going to refer as rth order statistics from uniform distribution over 0 1. So notice that its range u of r it is again going to be between 0 1. Okay, and we are going to call it as rth order statistic from uniform distribution and one can explicitly derive the distribution of this f u of r and this is given like this. And now if you notice this, this distribution of u r is independent of f of x. Okay, and, uh, and this is uh, I think this is like a beta distribution right yeah this is like a, a beta distribution and it does not depend on underlying CDF or uh, which uh, we started with which has like uh, whatever the f of x we started with. Because of that the distribution of the statistics we were interested in does not depend on f naught and one can compute even though its explicit form of this distributions is not available, one can do numerical computations and get the tail probabilities of these distributions and one can compute dn of alpha for all values of alpha. And now we can apply this uh, thresholds and to see whether I want to get a alpha level test and because of that we can conclude that the KS test is a distribution free test because it does the your statistics you do not need to make any assumption about that. It is independent of what is the null hypothesis that you want to be interested in. Unlike in the T test or F test where we have to explicitly assume that your uh, statistics is going to be either T distributed 
or f distribution so that's why we are going to call it as um, distribution test and uh, here uh, as I said uh, because uh, this dn alpha does not depend on any test one can do extensive numerical simulations and get a very good approx uh, very good values of this uh, tail probabilities of this dm so now i hope how to apply um, ks test is clear all you need to do is compute your dn if you want to do a two sided test and if you want to get a alpha level test you compare it against d alpha and if this is larger you reject it and uh, this is going to give you a alpha level test okay as a quick example suppose let's say there are 20 observations were chosen uniformly random over 0 1 interval and they were rounded off to four significant digits and uh, you want to test the null hypothesis that the square root of these numbers follow uniform distribution again over the interval 0 at significance 0 0.1. Okay, the 20 samples are taken and they are organized in increasing order here. And now let's see how we can apply KS test here. So now the table it is uh, the computations are represented in the table format here. So because we are interested in the square root of the observed sample. So we take the square root of these values here and their square roots are written here. This is basically actually the square root of x now like uh, let's say these are x here and uh, this is like a square root of x here. And we know that Sn is going to increment in value of 1 by 20 here because n equals to 20 here. So you will see that uh, these values are increasing in values of 0 0.05. And uh, this being an uniform distribution, the null hypothesis being uniform distribution, we know that this value is going to be uh, same as uh, uh, this value because uh, for a, a uniform distribution, we know this is equals to uh, f of not x equals to simply x, or this is like a linear line. And now you can take the difference between them. And what will be interesting in the absolute value of this, which is the maximum. If you look into this, the absolute value, this is the one which has the highest value and that is going to be the value of dn. At significance value alpha equals to 0 0.1, from the tables you can get it to be 0.352. And now you will see that dn is going to be less than uh, d then alpha okay so because of that you your test suggests that you are going to accept but then is this correct here so notice that what we have been told is x is uniform 0 1 and we have been asked to check square root of x is also uniform which is not the case. But in this case, by applying this case test, we ended up accepting that the square root of x is also uniform distribution. So obviously this is not correct. And here this number of samples are not good enough to make a decision. And usually as a thumb rule, one needs more than 40 number of samples to have a fairly correct answer. Otherwise uh, there may be uh, wrong conclusions we will end up making. Okay.